Hi guys, today I'm going to read for, to you a book that says, it's called Owl Moon. And look, what do we have here? Another Caldecat winner. I like those. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. What do you think owling means? There was no wind, the trees stood still as giant statues. And the moon was so bright, the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew, long and low, like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. They sang out, trains and dogs, for a real long time. And when their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked on towards the woods, Pa and I. Our feet, our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him, and every now and then to keep up, and my short, round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out, if you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always, always says. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. We watched the line of pine trees, black and pointy, against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up, as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, Woo hoo, woo hoo, woo hoo, woo hoo, the sound of a great horned owl. Woo hoo, woo hoo, woo hoo, woo hoo. And then he, again he called out, and then again, and after each call he was silent, and for a moment we both listened, but there was no answer. Pa shrugged and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said, sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't. We walked on. I could feel the cold as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. And you have to make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I'd ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry, with a scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hide behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Why do you think they're going out in the night to go owling, which I believe is looking for owls? Do you think that owls are active at night? When we came to a clearing in the dark woods, the moon was high above us and it seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing, and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed, and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf, over my mouth, and listened hard. And then Pa called, And I listened, and I looked so hard, my ears hurt, and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again. But before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. <laughs> pa almost smiled. Then he called back, <laughs> just as if he and the owl were talking about supper or about supper, or about the woods, or the moon, or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf, off my mouth, and I almost smiled, too. The owl's call came closer, from high up in the trees, on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved, and all of a sudden, an owl shadow 
part of the big tree shadow lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths, with the heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back to the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud. But I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says. The kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon. And that's the end. I really enjoy owls. And if you guys want to see some owls, you can go to a place called the World Bird Sanctuary. I will send your parents information on that place. It's pretty neat. They even have a camp in the summer when you get a little bit older. Um, it's called Eagle Adventure Camp. It's real. It's um, a lot of fun. My daughter has done it two times. Okay, let's talk about what our activities are today. So in here we have a little pattern sheet. So what you're going to do is cut off these owls right here. And you're going to comp complete the patterns that are listed right there. Also, we have an owl memory game. So you could use your tin frame if you want to put them um, in certain spots, or you can just um, put them out on the table however you want to. And then you lay them all out with the with this side showing up, and then you try to remember where the matching owls are. See, we've got this is a little owl. Let's see here, what else do we have? Here's a short-eared owl, a long-eared owl, a barn owl, and a tawny owl. Those are the owls that we have that you guys can match in your memory game, and your parents can help you, or whoever your grown-up is. Um, then we have this little game, this little book right here, and it says, where is chipmunk? We've got a little chipmunk attached here, okay? So the first page says that the chipmunk is inside the den. Now, is this inside the den right here? No. What about there? Is that inside? No. Right down here where he gets all of his goodies is where inside is. See? Then we can go to the next page, and the next page says, the chipmunk is on a stump. I'm sure you guys can do that. So those are the activities we have for you guys today. And of course we have your rolling of the letter uh, D and I will talk to you guys later. You have an owl, an owlerific day.